coming to you from an abandoned cavern in the woods at three in the morning. The horror. <laughs> it's the little podcast of horrors with James, Christina, and Chris. Ah, oh, that's sexy. <laughs> oh, okay. So here we are. It's our first. This is our first episode of Podcast of Horrors. How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? Super good and nervous. I'm gonna throw up. No, don't please. That's not. <laughs> that's not appealing. You know, <laughs> some people might tune <laughs> in. <laughs> <laughs> please don't. I have. I have sympathetic gag reflex. No. So. <laughs> so. For um, episode. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, James. Are you talking at all? No. Okay. I was like, is he talking? And we like can't hear him again. Okay, sorry. Yeah. You gotta join in, James. You're gonna be like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> it's part of the podcast. Okay. Jesus. Is it time to share our sexy stories? N- yeah, it's time. <laughs> it's time to share our sexy stories. Turn our down sexy, the lights. Nightmarish <laughs> our nightmarish stories. All right. So this is the little shop of horrors. Little podcast of horrors. <laughs> <laughs> little podcast of horrors where we talk about horrors and horrying activities and all things horrors. It'll be a sexy, sexy time with scandalous stories. Dear Lord. What? Tell me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no. Okay. So we're going to start off this episode um, with a ghost story. You know, it is the mm-hmm. Halloween season. Uh, it is October, October the 4th. 2022 and we are going to start off with a ghost story this ghost story now i knew about this ghost story first time i ever heard about this was uh on a one of those shows they used to put on the 90s and it was called haunted lives and Mm. this one always stayed with me and what's even crazier is that you can watch that show. It's on YouTube now. There's so many things you can find on YouTube. That entire thing is on YouTube. Um, okay, so our first episode is just, we're just going to play Jiraiza and don't show. Yeah, Ooh. let's just play the YouTube video. <laughs> Here we go. Here's the here's the YouTube. Video. No, I'm just I'm getting a backstory. It's a backstory, you know. <clears throat> you know? As seen on TV. Oh, uh, maybe we should include a link to it in our uh, show notes too. Uh, yeah, I would have to. F- find it uh, the link is to time travel to 1980x <laughs> and to your crt tv but this isn't this isn't just any ghost story this is a haunted school Ooh, okay oh yeah so this is a, a this is a creepy. haunted a haunted elementary school oh good um, creepy ghost kids it's it was it's Metz elementary and it opened in 1916 um and it ran for decades, but around the late 80s, if I'm correct, it had kind of fallen in disrepair. It wasn't being used anymore. Um, it was done. And so they decided, um, the city, um, and oh, yeah, by the way, James, uh, this is in Texas. That where, is just what I was going to ask. Yes, Austin. Looks like it's, yeah, if I'm looking at this correctly. Uh, this is like located in Austin. Um, Keep it weird, Austin. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> let me double check that. Yeah, Austin, Texas. Uh, so the construction crew came in um, to demolish this building. And almost immediately, things started to happen. Um, at one point, one of the construction workers uh, noticed a child in the window looking at him. So first off, that's not okay. One worker claimed he saw the ghost of a boy watching him out of the bathroom window. Hello, come in and use the bathroom. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> they hit Other- it with a wrecking ball Find- and it's like, oh, it was actually a live, live boy. <laughs> Finding kids in places they're not supposed to be. That's I know. <laughs> not just kids, dead kids. Uh, others said they could hear groups of children giggling within the empty rooms. Okay, that's not something I want to hear when I'm going through an abandoned building with no power and it's dark and I hear giggling children. Because it's like that old saying, there's nothing more precious than a child's laughter. Unless it's three <laughs> in the morning and you're home alone and you don't have children. So you, you don't want dead children to have a good time in the afterlife? Uh, not if it's with me present. Uh, they go have a great time 
Um, but not when I'm walking alone through a school building. No, thank you. Way, way to rain on the afterlife child parade. Chris. Hey, if, if you want to go hang out with ghost kids and you want to go support them, I will support you doing that. I will cheer you on from the safety of my house. Um, <laughs> I, I support the happiness of ghost children. I'm, I'm Let them you. giggle. Let them play and frolic. No. Uh, the sound <laughs> they, There was the sound of chalk screeching down. Unseen oh, chalkboards echoed through the halls. Strange drawings were left scribbled on the walls of barren classrooms. Now, the demolition leader, um, he stopped uh, ticking every, you know, time he stepped foot onto the property. His watch stopped ticking. That's what it is. His oh. watch stopped ticking every time he stepped onto the property. The machinery, the bulldozers, uh, would start breaking down. Um, they would not work at all. And this went on for quite a while but the part that the part that really stuck with me and for the longest time because this was in the 90s when i first saw the show even as a child I, I was like surely that's not what happened um cut to the present when we have google now of course you know just because you read it on the internet doesn't mean it's true but uh one of the construction workers died when a wall collapsed on him and the thought was that the children didn't like the fact that these construction workers were coming in to tear down their place of safety. Okay, okay. So, so far, we basically just have the plots of, like, 50% of the B action movies of the 80s. Because, like, what, what is always the plot of those? Especially, like, the made-for-TV ones. Like, the, you know, Chuck Norris is a, is a backwoods cop and he's got to help the children stop the evil corporation for bulldozing their rec center and building a parking lot like you know every other low budget action movie was that so it's basically this except all the children are dead yeah it's exactly yeah that's that's it that's we just there's no chuck norris all the children are dead that's the only difference that's the only difference yeah um but that's a big key difference though um if it's been chuck norris but no, it's just, you know, ghost children coming in. Um, but yeah, a, a workman was fatally injured in a wall collapse. So that's when they decided to bring in a clergyman uh, to bless the building and the area was finally leveled. Um, and apparently this made national news. Um, but here's the kicker. Here, here's the thing. <sighs> After all this happened and they tore the school down, remember this, like, imagine this happening to us, this going on. We're dead giggling children? No, we're the... I mean, I can't work. imagine that. <laughs> no, I mean, but imagine you're the construction <laughs> worker dealing with this. And, I'd rather you know, be the dead giggling children in this scenario. I would not. Oh, my. You would. I would not <laughs> want anything to do. I would not want anything to do. I would want to forget the place forever after everything that happened the main head guy decided to take one of the little sapling trees from the property and plant it in his daughter's front yard take a oh, wild wow. guess where that led to it grew to be a strong tree they oh. built many <laughs> many many fond memories together they built a tree house in it years later. She she got married under that very tree. That's and the a good, tree house and, was haunted by yeah, the, yeah. little children. They started hearing giggling from the tree. Did any other workers take haunted items from the building? No, not that I'm aware of. Because they were like, what are you, I'm not wanting anything to do. I'm not taking anything from this place. I would be like, but no, let's take a tree because nothing the, bad's going to happen. Think about the money you could roll in, though. Come see the amazing giggling tree. Fifty dollars admission. <laughs> I've it's heard like worse ideas. It's like the Whomping Willow from Harry Potter. Like, yes, picks cars up and hits people. <laughs> yeah, just have a you know waiver for everybody to sign going in that you're not responsible for any death or dismemberment, <laughs> and then they could come enjoy the giggling tree of wonder. Yeah, just don't try to chop it down; otherwise, the kids might kill you. Because apparently they killed this other guy who was just trying to do his job. But. 
Okay, so did her house like did her house actually have little children haunting her after that tree? So from what I've read, the the, the it's all centered around the tree now hmm. in the front yard. So I guess the kids are like not coming into the house, but oh. they're skipping and dancing. Their songs they they hear them singing. Like I just you know like I'm thinking about the creepy songs I used to play back in the day like Ash and they're like all this all frolicking and happiness we have to put an end to this we what all this frolicking and happiness we have to put an abrupt end to this yeah you know gross I, oh my god you know what <laughs> why can't they go frolic and be happy like on the other side like what what why yeah yeah why why don't you just go be the boss of where people go frolic and be happy I'm not being the boss I'm just you know, some, it's a suggestion it's a suggestion. We need a ghost principal to come and handle this situation and corral all these kids into the afterlife so See, they can Christine move on. Is on it. See, Christine I'm a problem solver. <laughs> all you have to do is kill a principal now on the property. That's it. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> Why have I been brought to this property? We need some help, sir. What are you doing? Like, you, you, you need you to do your. I didn't sign up for this, so. I don't, I don't know why he became suddenly himself. He's just like, I don't know. Hmm. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, the original story broadcasted uh, May 15th, 1991 on CBS um, Haunted Lives, True Ghost Stories. See, 1991, and- that was like the heyday of those like B-budget action movies where they're tearing down the school for a parking lot. Slash rec center, slash playground, you know. No. And then Mr. T shows up Mr. and T? is like, You're not gonna you're not gonna tear down the kids' place, build your parking lot, and they have a big showdown against the evil construction workers. That's like fifty percent of action movies back then. And then he takes down like he knocks down a wall and one of the construction workers and he's just like, Now get out of here. I would not have been a part of that at all. I would not have wanted to. Uh, I, what do you? I don't know. I blame it, the media yeah. of the time for <laughs> for for floating these ideas into kids' heads in the first place. That they can be, be ghosts. No, <laughs> that that the that the standard response to having your school slash rec center slash park demolished is to is to have hijinks ensue to scare off the construction workers well I, it didn't show in any of the articles but uh, in the cbs special that aired they also talked about uh, and during the segment they'd also cl- said that they would brought in a psychic which is common i mean you know mm-hmm. they were desperate to figure out what was going on and the psychic actually kind of explained to that this was a place of safety for these kids because this you know if you think about it 1915 i could have told you that well, yes but i mean you know, yeah. a lot of They're for a lot of them, this was a place they felt, you know, cared about. This was a place they could eat. A lot of them, you know, they didn't have a lot of money. Sometimes they probably went hungry when they were home. So it was a place of, you know, safety. So that that, that she said that this was uh, their home. You know, and the okay. construction workers were. So did I? Mi- okay, I, I may have missed it, but there was no like freak accident where a bunch of kids died in this school it was like maybe they died as older people and this was like the happiest time of their lives so they went back to the school as possibly spirits. yeah none of the stories and none of the special and nothing in the special ever suggested about the kids like all these kids dying in the school uh it, it just seemed like yeah it was just filled with their spirits now this is the early 20th century yes i'm sure many children died um, that were attending the school probably so many, yeah, i mean you know. any given school has an astronomical death rate that's just how things are that's true i mean <laughs> i mean yeah um i don't know i i, I want to say i want to feel like the ghosts that are haunting there died as children because i mean like i, I personally do not want to be like live my life and you know i'm wife and kids and grandkids and a mortgage and a career and you know live my life and then i'm like well it's time to kick off the mortal coil and I'm like and suddenly i'm back in my old elementary school and i'm a child gonna be like what the fuck? like yeah what? yeah that, that's 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 staying on you know plan with your fuddy duddy response here i'm not gonna be some stinky kid running and frolicking and enjoying myself <laughs> The, the, the life is about mortgages, dude. If and you want it, it James, misery. If you, when you 
kick off the mortal coil and pass on. If your little child spirit wants to go to your old elementary school, or at least the area that it used to be. I mean, be, not my old elementary school. That's the other thing. Who wants to go to school? Like, voluntarily. Well, these kids did, because it was during the time. It was, you know. I mean, um, wasn't World War One still going on? 1916, yeah. 1915, and then 1916, yeah. these are kids that would have grown up and been adults when World War II was going on. So maybe it really legitimately was the happiest time of their life. That's yeah, true. That's true. That's true. And how many of these kids ended up going to fight in World War II? Mm-hmm. You know, that's a possibility. Um, there's no telling. There's no telling. No, the interesting, the other interesting part is, um, let's see here. Uh, this, it was actually, oh, so it was a span. it was a school School board decided that Spanish-speaking children should attend a separate school. Uh, the board felt that children would learn better if they had lessons in Spanish as well as English. Up until that time, the Mexican-American community in Austin had not formally protested any action taken by the school board. But many people from the neighborhood most affected appeared before the board to disagree with the decision. The proposed school would be several miles away, making transportation difficult for the children and their parents. There was also concern that if the Spanish-speaking students were segregated, they would not have the same opportunities as those who spoke English. While the board never formally backed down from its position, Spanish-speaking children who attended the nearby school, Metz Elementary, were never asked to leave or to attend the other school. And after a period of time, the matter was quietly dropped. Hmm. So. Well, that turned out better than uh, some other segregation issues in this country. So. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's like um, one happy ending. But, yeah. So that's Can't a be story. an American story without a I know. little without, touch of racism. Yeah, without some oh, segregation. Yeah. I don't know. I like to, th- I don't know. I, I, I in all seriousness, I try to think about these kids, you know, I mean, if you want to take a moment and just say, yeah, it's really haunted. Yes. It's really their spirits. Mm -hmm. I I can almost understand. I mean, especially for a lot of these kids in that community, like that they were, what was, it was a safe place for them. It was someplace where, you know, they could get a warm meal and, and be with friends and, maybe forget the troubles that they were dealing with of the time, like world war one and poverty and who knows what else they were dealing with during that time. So it would make sense. It would make sense. They would want to stay where they felt safe. I'm Mm -hmm. just not for one. I'm not one who wants to (laughs) encounter them myself um, walking down a dark hallway and then just hearing. (laughs) Like, uh, no, yeah, <laughs> like, uh uh-uh. uh, hey man, I'm happy you're safe and happy, but I'm out. Mm-mm. That reminds me of Resident Evil or something like yes. the school with the zombie kids. Yeah. I'm good, but I hope they're happy, but I'm good. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's like, I, I mean, like, I'm a father of three, but you know, it's one thing, it's one thing to be ghosts or monsters, anything, but then if you just add the child element, it's like, it just what why it just gets 10 times creepier way to be ageist um kids are hella creepy (laughs) i mean i'm sure chris you've been just as i have been woken up in the middle of the night with your kids staring at you yes so creepy oh my gosh yes (laughs) nothing gets your gets your heart moving like that does (laughs) my eldest who is now he's only 13 but he's almost six feet tall and he sleepwalks let me tell oh you how much God. fun that is not. Because <laughs> he'll come barreling in the bedroom. Yeah, he comes barreling into the bedroom. Oh God. And that's the, be- that's the best scenario. The worst time was when he was younger. I remember I woke up and he was. He was just standing on my side of the bed looking down at me. No, no And thank he you. was not awake. <laughs> And this isn't my child and everything in me froze like the terror that I felt. Oh, my gosh. And then, you know, my middle child, same thing. There was one night he woke up and he was even creepier because the door to the bedroom just opened slowly and it made that creak. It was just. (laughs) 
And he's just standing there, but he's standing there like a little goblin. And he's just, and I'm like, Ben? Like with his arms out like that? Yeah. Are you okay? And then he takes off running down the hall. And I immediately See, in my head thought, if I, I get up and he's still laying in bed, we're out. We're leaving tonight. No, I, I don't get this. <laughs> like if that happened to be, I would just be pissed. If it's not 8 a.m. and you're holding a fresh cup of coffee for me, <laughs> you're about to be dead if you're not already. <laughs> well, I guess I didn't think about a cup of coffee at like whatever that was, like two in the morning, but. I had to go find him. And, and the thing is, I couldn't be mad. He was oh sleepwalking. He wasn't awake. And when I did find him, like, here, that was the other thing. He's not in his bed, so I know it's him. And the, all the lights are off, so I'm starting to turn the lights on in the living room, and I can't find him. And I'm like, what is Oh, my God. On? Was he hiding? <laughs> he was hiding. But he wasn't awake. Sleep hiding? Sleep hiding. <laughs> sleep hiding. <laughs> He was sleep hiding under the table because we had that we had it we had a tablecloth so you can't see it with the chairs and that's when I was like when I he wasn't in the living room part of me panicked and thought did he go out the door but then I'm like no he's too small and door it's got to change he was a spy in another life I guess (laughs) and when I found him he was under the kitchen table and he was just staring blankly like into space and I was like Ben. And he didn't really respond. I'm like, come here. And I grabbed his arm and he just came with me and got up, like, took him to bed. I would never be the same. (laughs) And Henry, my youngest, has scared me too. But he scared me in the worst way. Uh, I don't know if you recall this, Christina. So there was this story a while back on Tik or um, uh, uh, Twitter. This guy was talking about this child that was like haunting his 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 apartment, like oh, and, and the yeah. head was caved in. Yes, I know. What is that called? I, I can't remember. David something. David. Yeah, dear David or dear something David like or that. something like that. Yeah. The, it was this one particular night. Why I was doing this, I don't know. I'm in our bedroom. Uh, and my wife is asleep and the lights are off and I was charging my phone, but the way it was situated with the plug, I couldn't like lay in bed like I do now in our old house. So I'm sitting on the floor looking at his stories and, and apparently he had caught pictures of the ghost and it's this, if you remember Christina, I don't know if James ever saw this, but oh yeah, I know I know all about this. The, yeah. the good news spoiler was it was indeed made up. It was a I don't know if that was ever confirmed, was it? Uh, if I remember correctly, like a, a, after it finished its run, you finally admitted like you know it was basically you know one of those uh, unfolding That's... online stories. And but you know, but the regardless, thing was, I loved it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but at the time. <laughs> I'm sitting in the dark and I'm looking at these pictures of this child ghost with its head caved in and it's wearing that striped little um, little pajamas, right? Unbeknownst to me at the time, my two-year-old youngest child had come into the bedroom and I had not seen because my eyes were transfixed on this horror unfolding on me. And mind you, my child is wearing striped footy pajamas. Oh, my God. Yeah. Why'd you get him those? It, that's on you, dude. You're the <laughs> one clothing your children in stripes. I didn't expect to I see mean, this story. A, like a little uni- convict. <laughs> it is a universal rule that stripes on children mean murder. I mean, have you watched horror movies? What? Yeah, I've watched. I've probably watched more than you. What do you? What? No. Anyway. <laughs> And suddenly, as I'm looking at these pictures, suddenly I know there's somebody standing right here. And as I turn, all I see is a figure at the right height in the right clothing right there. And I'm ashamed to admit this, but I almost hit my child. I didn't. <laughs> Kick him I across didn't. the room. Your, I your threw... head better not be caved in because it's about to be. <laughs> I threw myself physically back into the desk that was right there. Like I, that's probably the most terrified I've ever felt. 
like and it, this wasn't just some gentle like oh goodness it was just <laughs> like and woke up my wife and startled him i guess he was like i guess my children just sleepwalk and katie's like what happened i'm like <laughs> and like i'm freaked out took me a minute to calm down <laughs> but were so, you a sleepwalker chris huh? were you a sleep a sleepwalker isn't I, that hereditary i don't know like it's really only my my it's only charlie my eldest who does it now um he still sleepwalks uh the other two did it only like a handful of times um but they they sleep pretty heavy now henry gets up constantly and likes to get in bed with us but he's not really sleepwalking it's just sort of like his thing so um, so the gotcha. the big lesson the big takeaway i'm getting from from this run is children are terrifying living or dead mm -hmm. and must be contained and controlled at all costs <laughs> no <laughs> lock them up <laughs> children are terrifying given the right conditions <laughs> which is any... which by right conditions we mean any conditions no I mean, their minds are warped, so they are kind of just scary all the time. Well, you know what? Let's see how well you handle it when you wake up in the middle of the night and somebody's standing over you. I, I mean, if they don't have a dent in the head, they're going to have one. I know. So that's <laughs> I can tell you what's going to happen. If it's not 8 a.m. and they're holding a freshly brewed cup of coffee... So it's just like a random kid comes in with a cup of coffee. You don't know this kid, and you're like, "Cool, thanks, bro." <laughs> hey, I mean, hey man, free coffee. I, you gotta <laughs> respect the commitment. I mean, that's 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 some hard effort to pull that off. I mean, respect <laughs> and thanks for the coffee. He like slipped past your security system and everything. <laughs> well, he's, if he's a ghost child, if he's a ghost kid, but he brings you coffee, is that still okay? Are you still like, hey, that's 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 saving me time in the morning. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll take free labor, living or dead. And you could just like take the cup of coffee and then sage right after and be like, thank you. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> sage it out. <laughs> yeah, See, this is good. the man. This is the man that said that if my ghost, his best friend, the ghost of his best friend. Because ever, you're not going to bring me a coffee at 8 a.m. in the morning. But, <laughs> but if I do, I my ghost is allowed to stay? I, for a good five minutes, at least. It's better than I got before, because he was all like, I will call a priest. I will, <laughs> I will yes. exercise. You didn't blah, say blah, blah, anything me. about providing me free services. I didn't that know that changes was on the table. Everything. I didn't That's know that was on the table. table. You can write him love notes on the steamed mirror. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you pull your weight, then... I mean, if he's like... I don't know, if he gets out of the shower and the window steamed and suddenly, like, you know, writing appears. Like, no, that's an exorcism. <laughs> and No, but if it's like... Like, if it's just a question of would you like hazelnut or vanilla creamer? Is that okay? You're going to be like, oh, okay, <sighs> What if it's a compliment? I'd be like hazelnut. No, 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 no. If it's a compliment while I'm naked in the shower, <laughs> it is not just a compliment. We we call that sexual harassment. <laughs> so you're gonna get roles. <laughs> you're you're gonna get a sexual harassment training, then an exorcism. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, if that's the case, I'm just gonna take it all the way and pinch his ass and just be like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he'll be like, "What?" I'm like, "Hey, this is funny. I got to get out of here, though." He's about to. Well, that's like, like that's, bye. <laughs> that's sexual harassment training. A lawyer and an exorcist. I'll be gone. I'll be like, "Come get me, fat fool." You're gonna sue a ghost? What precedent is there for that in the law? I'm sure there's a dead lawyer somewhere. <laughs> All I have to do is seance up a dead lawyer. And who pays you? Dude, we're, we'll work it out. We'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. These are the details you have to think about ahead of time, James. You can't just sue folks willy nilly. <laughs> you got to have some flexibility to adapt in the moment, okay? <laughs> Jeez. Anyway. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> oh, like, here's if the you're from, if you're from, if you're <laughs> listening from Austin, like, tell us what the heck happened. Yeah, we need to move. 1990, whatever. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there's a, a lot a lot of years have passed since then. If you know anything there, like personally a, about this story. Yeah. yeah. Is there is there still a mystical tree of frolicky wonders? Yes. Can we visit it? Can we come visit? I mean, that would be amazing. Um whose backyard is it in? Do they charge admission? That that concludes our first episode. We want to thank everybody for joining this evening or day or night or whenever you're actually watching this. We hope that you all have a happy Halloween. Tune in for our next episode coming next week. It'll be the next week. Insert insert date here. Tune in for our next episode, October the 11th. October the 11th, 2022. Until then, kiddos, have a happy, fun October. And do not ever have children. Um, if you like this episode, like, subscribe, share, whatever Spotify lets you do, um, and leave a review that kind of helps us get seen. And then also, if you want to reach out to us, you can reach us at littlepodcasthorrors at gmail.com. And I'll also put that in the show notes. So there (laughs) is the boring ending. (laughs) If you need a consultant for managing how much to charge to see your haunted tree of frolicky wonders... (laughs) Um, I, I, I charge a fair consultancy percentage <laughs> of the profits. Yeah. All right. You heard it here. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs>